Let's go ahead and hop into our second best of five tonight. This is obviously where the price money gets a bit higher and the level gets a lot higher. It's 80 bucks for the winner, 20 bucks for the loser. Ready when you guys are. Uh, there's also Polish coverage, by the way, in case I have any Polish viewers. Indy is also streaming this, guys. He has been streaming this for, I would say, almost 15 weeks now at this point. Uh, he's been going at it. I'm sure that he's pretty excited for this one, too. Because obviously we have a Polish Protoss. Art snuck into those Roddy DMs. He said, Roddy... What do I got to do to play in the big brain bouts? And then I said I would invite him and then I forgot. <laughs> and then he's like, hey, I see a nice announcement for the big brain bouts on Friday night, but I don't see my name in there. And I was like, I'm sorry, mate. I was like, next Friday you're in 7 p.m. And he said, all right, done. And I said, okay, I'll let you know soon who you play. Then I did a bit of thinking and I am not the biggest fan of mirror matchups, but since we already have a PVT, after this we have a PVZ and we have a main event PVT, I was like... Maybe the best thing to do is actually sneak in a PvP best of five. So it is fun. It's different. Let's go ahead and hop into our second series of the night. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. In the top left side of Gresvan, we are looking at the main base of the man who is making his debut on the Friday night. First appearance ever in the big brain bouts. This is the Polish veteran Art. Not to be confused with the other art. There are two arts in the European scene. One of them is Russian. This one is Polish. The Polish one is better. <laughs> in the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man that we all love. He's got a magnificent beard and he's also streaming his games. I posted his link in the chat, but any mod or VIP is always allowed to post links of the players and the person who streams in the chat. This is this. Apprentice Esports. The man plays a lot, streams a lot, uh, and above all, he's a super nice guy, so very excited. It's not his first appearance. I think he played against Goblin once. I think Goblin won that series, so maybe this is only the second time that Disc is playing. But if any of you guys is bored and you want to take a look at exclamation mark B and go through the history, you guys can let me know how many times Disc has played. I think it's only the second time that Disc is playing. Yeah, today is indeed a bit of a Protoss night. Uh, I'll make it up next week for the Terrans and Zerks out there. I think throughout most Fridays you guys can say that I've done like only Protoss or too much Protoss, right? It's just the way that it shapes up sometimes and the way that certain matchups are available. Not all the players are obviously available every Friday. Today is a Protoss night. It's funny that it is a Protoss night on the day that we open up Rootlord statue. I should have made it an all Zerg night, but I did not think that far ahead. We need more random players. I don't know if Raynor is still in the Netherlands next Friday, but maybe we can get Raynor's random in the best of five main event. Raynor's random against the one and only Big Gabe. Do you guys think Gabe wants revenge on Raynor's random? You guys think Gabe would accept that? I don't know if he would. I think he would accept it only if Raynor tells his race. <laughs> But I, I can try. Like an all random tourney is not something I am ultra fond of. And the main reason is that I feel like it will often just get decided on who gets the better races, right? Because like if it's like Saro versus Raynor, random versus random. But then Raynor gets Zerg three times and Saro gets it zero times. I think it's not that fun. Clem might indeed accept the random versus random, yeah. That would actually be a fun main event. Clem wins tonight. Maybe we can make it happen. All right. We just had a very long series, guys. But that was PVT. That was lower level. These high level nerds, they don't mess around. Proxy Robo here in game one. And to answer the server question, by the way, all games will be played on the European server. Because I think go playing from Poland on America is not great. And I asked Disc if he wanted to do server swapping. But Disc said, oh, no, Europe is totally fine for this. So all five games will be played on the European server. So wait, it's Robo, Gateway, but also a Nexus. I am a tad confused here. Four Adepts, Proxy Robo, Proxy Gate, and a Nexus. What is that all about? I hope, by the way, the disc is still paying attention. There are two more Adepts, mate. There are two more Adepts that are going to try to get lucky. Disc was chasing the two Adepts. Is he paying attention? Yes, he is. Art is indeed not building too many pros, but it's only a three worker deficit. It's just more that this is such a big investment, guys. 
You can't really, very casually, is he gonna cancel it? Will it be like an ultra late cancel? And is he just hoping that this cuts it? I don't think you cancel though. I'm confused. I don't really know what I'm looking at, but it doesn't matter. So far, what we can say though is that the adapts haven't been great, but here comes the real army. This is what it was all about, and this is probably gonna be like, what the hell? Where did that come from? And there is no shield battery in the natural. Force fields will go down, and Big Daddy Immortal should reign supreme here. I would have loved to see one force field on this ramp, by the way. I mean, I guess we can also just kill the pilot and kill the natural and then go home, because we have an expand. This is a big brain play by Art and a half. This is one of the most unexpected proxy robots that I've seen with four adapts and an expand. This is not how you normally play 3 gate robo, but I guess because you don't expect it, it becomes really good. Follow up is going to be a Twilight Council. What, an, uh, what a bizarre build here in game one by Art. But it's absolutely working out in a marvelous manner. And Disc is probably just really confused. I guess he kind of knows by now what happened, but it's like, man, I was just ready for some fun video games as he does drop some force field sniping the prism would be a way back into this game, but art is too good to let you get an easy snipe on the prism. Honestly, big rain plays here, guys. I, uh, I can't blame this for not being ready for this. Like you see four adapts, you see a nexus. Why would your opponent be playing three gate robo? With a proxy robo on your side of the map. This is one of these things that doesn't make a lot of sense. But those are often the things that are best. The Immortal is still just getting a lot of damage off, man. All these shots, they hurt so much on the Stalkers. 50 damage a shot for Big Daddy Immortal. And the only thing that this has is slightly quicker blink, but he has a much smaller army and he's down on one base. It feels kind of over to me, but... Let's see. I think Art has just recalled a bunch of Stalkers home because he knows that the War Prism has been leaving town. He is now looking to snipe this Prism and look at the Stalker movement from Art. It is once more. Absolutely perfect. Man is playing a great game one. I don't think there is like a strong favorite or underdog here. I think this was very even. I did not want to see a bunch of 3-0s tonight. Man, game one it definitely feels like it's all Art. Disc now blinking away from his uh, main base with four stalkers, but Art is already chasing it. It seems that our Hail Mary play here in game one is going to be the Robo Bay. Mm. By the time that uh, those disruptors come into play, guys, Art is going to have access to blink himself. Uh, Disc, you're going to have to blink. You're going to have to recall, mate. You can't afford to lose these stalkers. Oh, he's going to try to blink out. He's going to try to blink out. But Art also will have... He still need to recall, I think. Oh, 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 he's gonna lose even more. Oh my gosh. This is going from worse to worse, as a wise man once said. And that's the one I still don't have on my stream deck, but... This is gonna try to warp in two adapts. Yeah. Like, if you get a few more probes, and you go for an expand that's so late that your opponent is not expecting it anymore. If this wins this game, it's a god tier victory. It feels almost impossible to me, but... This is actually a pretty good play. He's got one Nova, guys, right? Do we have one Nova to work with? No, we don't. Oh, I thought we did. <laughs> what he does have is a bunch of sentries and a couple of shield batteries. The next is not quite done yet. Okay, force feels not bad. Again, sniping the prison would be a lovely play too, but... Seems difficult. I mean, with overcharge... Oh, blinks forward. Once again, the prism gets the prism. Should have a shield battery overcharge here. This is where, like, one safety immortal, one defensive immortal, or one purification nova could actually have a very big impact. He's going to try to tag one of the two immortals. Disruptor is on the production tab. I think Art is going to fully send it the moment that overcharge has ran out. And that is right here. Art has a much bigger army. He's down, down in workers, but he has a bigger army. He's going to forward blink, I think. I think Art will forward blink. There is the forward blink. Gets on top of the army of this. And this is where Disc wishes that Disruptor was out. It's not out. By the time it's out, I think that Disc is going to lose all his battle units. The majority of his probes. Here comes that Nova. It's a really good Nova. But it's not going to save him. Kill too many Stalkers. Too many Immortals. Too much firepower in the Immortals. 
and Platinum Heroes Art takes the one O lead. I know our prediction is still open, but that's okay. It's the best of five, it's PvP. And I highly doubt we can go four adapts into Proxy Robo, Proxy Gateway, and an expand too many more times. So I think this is a one off. It's a big brain strategy, well played, but not something you're gonna do again in this best of five. I was smart. If that Nova would have happened at the start of the fight, when, you, when you, we still had the ability to maybe overcharge, then I think there was a chance. But kudos to Disc for still trying to make something of that game. And with the Adapt Harass and the Stalker run by, oh, actually, good effort. Not good enough, but still good effort. I would have probably just tapped out the moment I lost my Nexus. Uh, same outcome, but at least he tried and he showed the fighting spirit. All right, now I'm really curious. If you do your opponent that dirty in game one, I am very curious to see what will be brought out here in game two. As we load into the beautiful big green map, as Saro calls it. Asian Cistern, round two. Let's go. Round two, fight! Taking the 1-0 lead, uh, representing the Platinum Hero, something that Aniac is very pumped, out, uh, pumped up for in the chat. We're looking at the main base of our Polish Protoss, his debut on the Friday night. Platinum Heroes Art. Apparently still a fan of Zest. Can't blame him. I too am a fan of Zest. Not as much as I'm a fan of Gabe, but... When it comes to sexy start of two players, Zest absolutely takes top two right after Gabe. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man with a magnificent beard. He is uh, representing Canada and Apprentice Esports. This is Disc. And I'll be honest, guys. If I was Disc and I get invited to play a best of five, PvP, money on the line, you think about all the scenarios, the Blink Stalker, when you go three base, do we go Stargate? Yes, no. And in game one, you get done dirty like that. I'll be like, oh, okay, the gloves are off. Now we're battling. I thought we were going to have a fun time, but if that's how you want to play it, that's how we play it. <laughs> I think from here on out, I, I take that personal. <laughs> a game on like that in the best of five, I would absolutely take it personal. It is Friday night, the start of an absolutely amazing weekend for me, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys out there. We've got StarCraft tonight. We have StarCraft tomorrow night on this channel, Community StarCraft. Tomorrow morning, Raynor is playing in Pix Tournament. And on top of that, there is great football this weekend. Ajax Feyenoord, I can't wait. Uh, there is Formula 1 and UFC. What a weekend, guys. Holy smokes. Not even kings used to live a life this good. What a weekend we got ahead of us. And tonight I am finally, finally opening my Broodlord statue. Honestly, this could very well peak as one of the best weekends of 2023. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be the best, but if I not beat Ajax, my statue is as beautiful as I think it is. Tonight is awesome. Rainer dominates tomorrow. Leon Edwards defends his title. The, the, the race on Sunday is great. The virtual race is great. Then maybe it is going to be the best weekend of the year. But That's a lot of ifs and buts, guys. That's one hell of a parlay that I would not put my money on. <laughs> Alright, so Art is once more opening up with Adepts, but after the two Adepts, he goes stalk Stalker. We'll go for a proxy, but it's a proxy Twilight Council. And this makes me wonder, is this the quickest possible Dark Shrine? Oh, yes it is, baby. If we move the probe like that right before the Twilight Council is done... That is dirty, man. Holy... I did not know that Art was dirty like this. This reminds me of that J. Cole song. Like, who taught you to be dirty like that? But we're not going to mention the name who taught him. I knew you were dirty, but damn. This is goddamn disgusting. <laughs> Game 1, Proxy Robo with a fake expand. Game 2, quickest possible Dark Shrine. And I really hope for our Canadian Protoss disc that is Hallucinated Phoenix takes a route to the top left side, but it's not. But these guys... That's a, I thought it was a J. Cole song. No, no, no. It's J. Cole. Oh, no, wait. Maybe it's... Who 
thought you'd be dirty. Like, or maybe it's Kit Cuddy then. No, I thought it was Jake. It doesn't matter. All right. So the hallucinated Phoenix scouts the Nexus and scouts a lack of tech in the main base. And okay, this is good, guys. The alarm bells go off immediately. He's like, I wasn't born last night. I know something ain't right. Something is missing. I'm going to go ahead and drop a very quick uh, robo. But the DTs are already being warped in. Now, there is a way to get DTs out. You can obviously just force field. You can also hold position units with shield battery. Oh, this, this. You need to be careful. If the DTs get into the main base, guys, it is... I don't want to say all over, but it's kind of over. Disc, do we see it? Do we see it? Do we see it? Yes, we see it. And he hold positions. Oh, yes. That's good. Okay. A couple probes will die. A decent amount of workers will die. Uh, why is that observe? Oh, man, that's actually a lot of damage already, no? That is a lot of damage, guys. Look at these two adapts. It's, oh, my God. The Dark Templar kills the Stalker as well. Another force field goes down. I like, this will be able to get an observer out, but jeez Louise. Art is dealing so much damage here. These Dark Templars are going ham on these units. Finally, the observer comes out. And one DT falls, second DT falls, but not before. It kills another sentry. And you look at the worker lead that Art has created for himself. An eight worker advantage for the Polish Protoss. That man is dirty. That man is dirty. It's Kanye West from the song Blame. Yes, it is the Blame game. Let's play the Blame game for some reason okay then it's not j code on and it's just kanye west i was wrong you guys were right thank you <laughs> glad to know that i've got some die hard hip-hop top tier uh fans in the chat thank you ethel for the 25 months mm. this handled that very well I think he handled it well. It could have been better, right? We could have evacuated the pros from the low ground. I think that would have made our life a whole lot easier. And he's still behind, though. No matter how well you think he may have handled that. And he didn't straight up lose the game, right? The DTs didn't get in there and kill the robo or kill the pylon. But it's it was still pretty painful, man. A grand total of eight probes, two stalkers, two sentries. Like, that's a lot of damage. And in PvP, it's really hard to make comebacks, right? If it's blink against blink, you're working with the same tools. Art actually already has blink, much quicker blink. I think our Canadian Protoss Disky is in serious trouble here. Guardian Shield gets activated. Good job with the Guardian Shield. Saves that Stalker. Art is just playing a, a pretty relentless best of five so far. It's very dirty openings. But his follow-ups, it's just non-stop aggression. He's always in the face. He snipes at sentry too. This is just going to try to stabilize by time until he has blink himself. But it's 14 stalkers against 11. It's difficult. It is difficult. This is really going to have to outplay art here to make something of this game. But it's, it's so hard, right? Like, where do you start right now? What is the correct call for this? Do you drop a Robo Bay when you're down a base and you're down in Blink Stalkers already? Maybe, but... Do you drop your own Dark Shrine and try to get lucky? Do you just make Stalkers and Zealots the exact, the exact same units as your opponent of a worse economy and worse upgrades? Like, is there a correct choice? Sniping this pylon would be a start. Carry us, yeah. Sure, mate. If, uh, if Art right now decides to not be Art and drop down to a 4,400 MMR Protoss and not attack Disc for the next 7 minutes, then indeed Carriers would be awesome. But I don't think Art is going to stop being Art. <laughs> He's going to keep pushing the same pace as he has been pushing so far in these two games. And this is going to make it very hard for Disc to uh, attack up. I, I think a Robo Bay is the best call here. And that obviously means that you're going to be forced to be very defensive for a very long time. But I actually think uh, Robotics Bay is your best choice here. You can obviously start with plus one on your own forge. And then just cannons, batteries and disruptors and pray. There's a couple of stalkers get found here in the bottom side of the map. Two immortals, an Archon and 14 stalkers against 19 stalkers and immortals. I mean, Stalkers are pretty good defensive units, guys. Especially near batteries and whatnot, so... 
There is a chance that this can hold here. It's going to be very, very, very difficult. Our Canadian Protoss is going to have to display some magnificent micro. Or Art needs to ignore a battery. Okay, Art is going to blink forward. A couple of Zealots in the mix here are fantastic. These Zealots were soaking up the Immortal shots. And that is what allowed Art to get away with that engagement. Disc is trying, but Art's army is just too big. Too powerful. Easy re uh, relentless and very, very, very dirty so far. There is no other way to put it. And Art takes a quick 2-0 lead. Proxy Robo with a fake Nexus. 3 gate in game 1. And the quickest possible Dark Templars in game 2. Who taught you to be dirty like this, Art? I don't know who else is on the Platinum Heroes. I know my man Goblin is, but... In all the years that I've known my boy Goblin... I have never seen him be this dirty. Goblin is an angel compared to this gameplay. I feel like Art has whipped out the great book of Protoss bullshit for this best of five. And he's like, all right, what what can we get away with? How many dollars on the line, buddy? 80 for the win? He's like, I, I got something for you. And well, it is a very big book with a lot of pages. And I guess on that page, I can't wait to see what he has in store for us in game three. As we load into altitude, by the way. What a nightmare of a map for Disc to start, eh? Very difficult comeback against what is so far a very tricky Protoss. And I don't even know this guy is a very tricky Protoss. I know he's as, um, as an aggressive Protoss that is willing to switch it up. That has a lot of different playstyles. But I didn't know he was dirty like this. But the man so far is disgusting. And I'm sure some of you guys love it. Round 3. Fight. Bottom left side, taking a 2-0 lead very quickly. Those two games were shorter than that final game between Holden and Nihat. Representing the Platinum Heroes, trying to make Aniak and all the other Platinum Heroes nerds out there proud in the chat. This is a Polish Protoss art. 2-0. In very quick fashion. In the top right side, the man who just started his stream for this best of five. He is a very active streamer he's a grinder he plays in a lot of tournaments he probably imagined a lot of things for this best of five but not this scenario down all to 15 minutes into the series and really nothing going his way basically being dead both games five minutes in can we keep it together can we turn it around can we use some of that experience this is this and by the way guys that's dirty too man after being hyper aggressive in the first two games, the man sneaks in Nexus first on altitude. Art is all over the place. So far in this best of five, Art is all over the place. And I guess that's kind of what we want to see right in the big brain bouts. We want to see players that come up with trick plays, make it hard for the opponent to figure it out. Disc is going to try to be aggressive, but Art has already dropped the second gateway. He's going to scout this immediately. And most of the time, guys, when you go as aggression as a response to something you scout, it's almost already too late. I feel like Protoss aggression is only ever really good if that was your default plan all along. But if you do it as a response to scouting it, I feel like you're already too late. Disc is gonna try, but I have the feeling that this is really good for Art, man. He's got two probes on the low ground. He's all over this proxy. This Zealot is gonna have crazy DPS, as Disc is also gonna build a Robo here. He needs his Stalkers to show up. First, the Stalkers only now popped on his side of the map. Like, Disc is gonna lose two, three pylons here or something? Uh, Trigger is in the chat. Our Protoss from Bastard is saying Disc is rip. I am very tempted to agree with you that I think Disc is in all sorts of trouble. It's not one but two Zealots. Disc is gonna lose like five pilots here, man. Finally, the Stalkers have shown up, but even that pilot is probably going to fall, because Zealot DPS is crazy. And now there is a Stalker in the mix as well for Art. And two Stalkers in the mix, mix for Art. Oh, 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 Disc. Oh, oh, oh. What is happening here, guys, in this second best of five of the night? Everything that put could possibly go wrong in the best of five for disc is legitimately going wrong does finally have power to that gateway warp gate is 10 seconds away from finishing up 
We've got two adepts sneaking in. Maybe those, those can create some chaos. At least we have two pylons finally up. We're going to start working on our immortal. We need to buy a little bit of time here. And this is actually hard. Where do you warp in? All the way here, right? Yeah. As far away in the back as possible. Four stalkers is good enough to at least allow your immortal to see the light of day. But that is a late immortal. Here come the adepts with the shade is from too far back. I wouldn't let the shade finish up. He is going to let the shade finish up. As he just wants to create chaos. Go for the battery then. Okay, maybe, guys, if this can get both batteries, and then he gets an Immortal. All right, gets actually still two probes with that as well. Goes for the pylon. Can he unpower Warp Gate? No, he cannot, but close call. All right, where's Big Daddy Immortal? Here's Big Daddy Immortal. This, guys, with some YOLO plays here. Can he keep going? You have to keep going, this. Time is not on your side, Amigo. You want to go? Oh, Sentry, Sentry, Force Field. But actually, the Immortal makes it through. Big Daddy Immortal is going to get some good shots up. Good target fire by Disc as well. Disky for Canada. Stalker from the high ground. Cannot reach. Disc. Oh. 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 <laughs> what a way to still find a possible victory here, guys. Wow. That was sick, man. I would have canceled that adapt shit because I thought it wasn't that good. And I think that Art made a very big mistake losing all the batteries there. But well done by Disc. Very, very, very well done. That looked like that was going to be the worst best of five of his life. Trigger running. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was in agreement with Trigger. I don't think that should have happened. Uh, that was a dream scenario for Art. He just messed up in the defense. That is something we see, right? Obviously, money on the line. Pressure can get to the players. And even very experienced players like Art can make mistakes. He gave up on the batteries, chased the adepts. Well, it wasn't so much about those adepts. Uh, Trigger was 100% correct. I think someone is just uh, teasing him in the chat because of that one guy. That's always being uh, kind of a dick to me. But he's not here tonight. Because I guess Roddy has been right so far. He's waiting. He's lurking in the shadows. <laughs> All right. Game four. These guys, by the way, no time to waste. That's nice when you're dealing with Protoss players, you know. No shoulder injuries. No breaks needed. <laughs> Short games. Hey, PvP. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into game four. No 3-0. I'm happy about that. Because that looked like... It wasn't just going to be a 3-0, guys. But that looked like it was going to be one of the most one-sided and shortest 3-0s we've ever had. But it's not. We've got a series on our hands. Let's go, baby. Round four, fight. In the bottom left side, the man who has been busting out a lot of tricks so far and was awfully close to winning this series trio in a dream series for him where basically almost everything went according to plan. Instead, he's facing a bit of adversity now. Made a mistake, kind of through that previous game. And he's gonna have to work for it. Can I keep it together? And representing the Platinum Heroes, this is Art. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who I do not believe has his camera on for this best of five. But if he did, I'm sure he'd be smiling a little. Because he was probably ultra tilted with how all of that started off. And I saw you like, oh, I won? And now you just feel like you're free rolling, right? Because you already thought you were dead in the series. Now he's not dead. And he's got everything to play for. Apprentice Esports Disc. Is PvP my favorite matchup? Hmm... I like PvT. I, I think PvT is my favorite matchup to watch and to cast. But I do really enjoy watching PvP. It's just very hit or miss, right? PvP sometimes is fantastic and it can also be really dreadful. But because it is my race, I kind of like it. I'll be that honest. If I was not a Protoss player, I would probably like PvP a whole lot less. But because I play Protoss, I do like PvP. And especially if you look at someone like Max Pax, then I do think it is... Hard not to appreciate how good he is at the matchup. I don't hate a single matchup, but uh, TVT is my least favorite to cast. Mostly just because TVT has a lot of downtime. There's like six, seven minutes of often not no scouting and no engagements. And that's just what I hate. Once team combat shield are done and we have three bases and the first sensor tower is up, TVT becomes pretty good. But up to that point... Uh, the first 7-8 minutes can feel like a bit of a drag to me. I love ZVZ. 
Because ZVZ is literally always on a knife's edge. And on any given moment, any Zerg can make 20 links, fire up a couple of roaches, can try to sneak in a spire. I think ZVZ is actually always exciting. Because even when nothing happens, anything could happen at any given moment. TVT doesn't really have that. I did see it, SC Jax. I've been watching a lot of picks tournament, guys. I've watched uh, the entire best of seven today between Clem and Serral. I watched a couple games of Clem versus Dark. I watched all seven games of Hero Max Packs. It's been a, a very good tournament. Pig is absolutely getting pretty fortunate so far. I watched a little bit of Maru Oliveira as well. I felt a bit sad for Oliveira. Maru was angry, guys. Maru took it personal. Uh, it's, it's been awesome. That's why I'm really excited. And I said it a couple times. Tomorrow morning it will continue. And I cannot wait to watch Rainer play. The glass is actually a gift from my man Lino. I don't know if Lino is still in the chat. I think Lino takes a break every now and then. But basically, guys, uh, the glasses that I had for my visitors were somewhat embarrassing. It was like a mix between three Coca-Cola glasses you get with a Happy Meal or a Big Mac menu 20 years ago and some other random glasses from McDonald's. And basically at one point I said, I really need to buy like a decent amount of like some whiskey glasses. I had wine glasses, but I didn't really have any long drink glasses. And then my friend Lino gifted me a box full of glasses and, that, and this is one of them. So I don't know uh, what brand or where they came from, but Lino is the one who gifted them to me. Mm -hmm. So far, guys, out of all the PvPs, five minutes in, this is all relatively uh, even. Nobody got away with murder, and nobody's doing something ultra cheeky. It's just blink against blink. Look at the robo timings, even. Virtually identical. I'm not saying I was drinking Coca-Cola, Maglaron. I'm saying that I had a long drink glass with Coca-Cola branding on it. It's not the same. Other than that, uh, you do whatever you like, man. If you don't want to drink it, that's fine. If anybody in the chat does want to drink it, that's also fine. We all live our own life. <laughs> and we don't have to bother other people with how we live our life. <laughs> I, uh, I personally like drinking some cola or Dr. Pepper or Dr. Fruits or... Anything, but who eats the run? Alright, blinks into the main base, loses a single stalker, gets out of there with the majority. Grabbing four probes, by the way, is not bad, especially not, guys. If you take into consideration that he still has the adepts on the other side of the map, and he's going up to three bases before this. So this is honestly not a bad start for uh, our man from Poland, who's still in the 2-1 leads. Questionable warp in, exactly. Good job there by Art, man. Going for the one stalker that's being warped in. Because A, those stalkers obviously can't move, right? They're always going to be stuck. And B, shield batteries can't heal them. I mean, uh, ooh, adapts, guys. Two adapts have shaded into the main base. These were the adapts that I highlighted earlier. I mean, sure, Art was a bit dirty in game one and game two, guys. But he's kind of outplaying this here in game three. There's just no other way to put it. Put it. He's still active with the stalkers. And seven additional work is going down. Quick at third base. This is really good play by Art. Uh, I feel like Disky just kind of got picked apart there. That had nothing to do with tricks or being cheeky. That was just both players working with the same tool, same unit, same opening. And Art finding damage and excellent execution. Disk is going to try to do the same thing. But yeah, the, the later it hits, the less impactful it's going to be. Losing 7 probes over 42 probe economy is a much bigger deal than losing 4 probes over 55 probe economy. So, I think Disc is in uh, pretty serious trouble here. A 13 worker deficit is so hard to overcome. It is so damn hard for you to overcome. I mean, I can definitely understand that this has been a frustrating series for this. But I feel like after that game 3, you got to be absolutely cooking. Because somehow, you're able to play. I mean, this was just once again perfect defense by Art. Apparently, Art, his warping, was able to split up the two adepts there. So this not able to find too much. Gets 3 in the end. They had 3 probes of 55 probes. 
is nowhere near the same as seven probes of a 42. Uh, it's just been a rough one for this, guys. What time is it? It's a Friday afternoon in beautiful Quebec, Montreal. There is hope, but not a lot of hope. This is gonna try to bring it back with the Robo Bay. This is something we touched upon briefly at Ancient Cisterand, where it's probably one of the best ways to make a comeback if you're working with the same units. Uh, but Art obviously hit a very good timing with the Immortals and these Elots. And it seems that Art is gonna hit the same timing. And he's not even ultra all in with this kind of stuff, because he is going up to four bases. So it's not that Art needs to win the game right here, right now, but. This is one of these attacks where I was like, if I win the game, that's pretty awesome. If you lose the prison, by the way, this, a blink, this, blink. Okay, that's the one way that this could potentially drag this game out. That's a big mistake by Art. At the same time, it seemed like this was once more counterattacking. And now Art probably second-guessing himself, right? Shall I still commit without a war prism or not? And that is going to allow this to get the first disruptor out. Big snipe, guys. That is a very, very, very big snipe for this. And it will allow him to dream. Art has less workers, but a much quicker fourth base, so he can build four probes at a time. But now Disc has Disrupt Attack. One Disrupt out, second Disruptor on the way. No, there is a game here. I think if, if Art does not lose that Prism, I don't know if Disc can ever hold. But losing that Prism gave Disc time. And now this is gonna have to pull up some fancy micro. He can fire the you No, what? What killed that? Did this just kill his own disruptor? It felt that Art wasn't even in range. It felt that Art was not even in range. We have a shield battery overcharge, and Art is gonna try to snipe it. There's one more disruptor coming. That's a good shot, but Art does blink away from it. I have the feeling that Disc just sniped his own disruptor, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and take another look at that because the stalkers of the art were out of range as far as I could tell. Art wins the series. His debut on the Friday night is a monstrous success. A very convincing 3-1 victory over Disc. I honestly kind of thought Disc was the favorite here to be completely honest with you guys. So, Really good showing by Art. Look, the stalkers are here. This is Disc. <laughs> I don't know if that would have made the difference, but that definitely didn't help, guys. That definitely did not help. GG. Honestly, uh, Disc is a great player. We know he's a great player. He has had a couple of very good runs in the DreamHack Masters and a He's had plenty of good victories against Europeans on the ladder. Every now and then, we all have a best of five that we just want to forget about as quickly as possible. We live and we learn. And we definitely forget about it. And I think this was one of these series for Disc where it's just like, man, nothing went my way. This is a frustrating best of five for him. But hey, an awesome series for our man Art, who gets his first W. As we get 10 more subbies. Because Basilisk loves rewarding us with 10 subbies. I'm going to have to take a couple of minutes, guys. Uh, need a few minutes. I'm going to take a couple of minutes, and after that, we will be back with the co-main event of the evening. For Jumi versus Lambo. And if you guys want the ruddy, that's questionable matchmaking, I've got a great story for you guys. Stick around three minutes. After that, we'll be back. We're going to start the next prediction as well. Jumi versus Lambo. 100 bucks for the winner, 25 for the loser. Coming up, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you, Basilisk, for the 10 subbies. And obviously allowing me to run this event.